That's great. It's a pattern keep it on. There we go. Don't leave it on one screen too long. <laughs> <laughs> punch a hole. <laughs> right. Good point. Uh, so the system uh, also uh, had, uh, you know, uh, 12 uh, input data switches, and uh, not unlike, uh, you know, something equivalent to, say, a PDP-1 or a PDP-8 today, or back then. <clears throat> um, the uh, teletype was constructed out of three junked ASR-33 chassis that were given to me by a friend in high school. Now and all reconstructed the machine out of miscellaneous parts. Uh, if you tilted it just the right way, it would actually work. You, and when it stopped typing, you had to kind of stuff this uh, foam under the corner to get it to go again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then on the right, the home brewer, uh, Carl Kell, uh, gave me this uh, Burroughs tape drive, which was taken out of service, uh, I guess, in the late, early uh, 1960s. You can see the date code on this tape is 61. The oxide was getting a little bit old at that point and had a tendency to crack, <laughs> as did one of the pinch rollers, which had to be remachined uh, in order to drive the tape in and out of the vacuum columns over here. And that was interfaced to the machine. Um, it was a lot of fun, and this really was a, what you might regard as a personal computer. Uh, and one, uh, shortly after uh, the first meeting of homebrew, uh, Gordon French came over to have a look at the machine. And actually, if we look at the next slide, here is Gordon's notes from that. Um, All typed on his chair. <laughs> and Gordon was saying, a final note, Bob Lash invited me to see his 12-bit machine, and it really is a bit. <laughs> he showed me how it could count upwards with one register and downwards with another simultaneously. <laughs> All this because it's micro-coded. Uh, especially considering Bob's age, this computer and its owner are truly remarkable. A very fine piece of work by anyone's measure. And then he was announcing that the next meeting uh, was going to be April 16th uh, at Peninsula School. And that's, I believe, where we then heard uh, Fool on the Hill uh, played, as you just saw it uh, today. Uh, so, at the, <coughs> I went to the first meeting in Gordon's garage, and, uh, thank you, and, uh, People talk a lot about what happened in the garage. To me, one of the most interesting things was what was happening inside the house. Uh, Gordon invited us in to see his chicken hot computer. And this was an 8008 machine. But what was most remarkable about this machine, in my opinion, was that it had neither RAM nor ROM. Uh, he did have 16K of memory, but the way he accomplished it was by taking shift registers, 16K worth of shift registers, and circulating his program and data in a loop. And the 8008 would idle and wait until the correct address came by. <laughs> and then it would read or write in that location, and then they have to wait again for the next. So it was quite, and yet it was run, I believe it was an ASI 35 that he had, the teletype. Uh, uh, it was quite impressive, and it worked beautifully. Uh, so I was just in total awe, I still am in total awe of this machine, uh, really quite a legendary system.